So uh, one thing that really had me thinking recently was uh, the great wonders of God. Uh, God has created some really awesome things. If you think about the places like, uh, well, let's say the, well, just for example, the seashore. You know, the ocean is vast, and it's it's amazing. You have the Grand Canyon. You have Niagara Falls. You have a lot of places that people go to to see things like the mountains. Uh, there is a lot of travel done in our time going looking at the wonders of God. And then there's this quote by St. Augustine from uh, the 4th century. Men go abroad to wonder at the heights of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, and at the circular motions of the stars. And then they pass by themselves without wondering. <laughs> God created all these things in six days, and every time he said it is good, it is, it is good. And then when he, when he made man, he said it is very good. So do we truly believe that we are the crowning achievement of what God created? And one uh, one reason that uh, one thing that sets us apart from, say, the creation, the animals, and so forth is, uh, I believe, is is our ability to uh, to love and to uh, to have emotions, to uh, and to choose. Uh, of course, there's a lot more, but that's what that's what's standing out to me. Uh, and uh, one thing we humans also have is Google. <laughs> I was studying uh, about the love of God yesterday, and uh, it's just kind of amazing what what comes up there again. If we tune into the right thing, we uh, we can learn a lot. Uh, love is a choice, but it is also an emotion. Um, we could uh, we could say that yes, we choose to uh, we choose to take care of our wife, we choose to take care of our children, we choose to do God's commandments, we choose, we choose, but it can actually turn into sort of a a dead thing if we're not if our emotions aren't connected to it. It's doesn't look like a whole lot of fun. Um, for uh, for a long time, emotions was some emotions were something I was, I guess you could say, rather ashamed of. But now I'm realizing that God has emotions. God, uh, there's a lot of things in the Bible where God is showing emotion. So I believe that we're created in the image of God, uh, and emotions are. Uh, can be a healthy thing. I believe they can also be unhealthy. Um, should we say they're more the uh, the uh, thermometer of what's going on in the room? So I just have a couple verses here I want to share about the love of God. Um, I used to think that in the Old Testament God was... Uh, kind of harsh he was kind of rough around the edges and he did a lot of things and so now I'm reading about I did a lot of searching for the love of God and lo and behold most of these verses are in the Old Testament um, Jeremiah 31 3 it says I have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness I have drawn thee and this I believe is when uh, when Israel was being taken captive, um, it would seem that God was really punishing Israel, but yet here he says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness I have drawn thee. And Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, he will rest in his love, and he will joy over thee with singing. 
do we believe that God is so excited about us that he breaks forth with singing when he looks at us? Uh, David was a man after God's heart, and I'm seeing in Psalm 139 that he realized that God is always, always with him. It says in verse 7, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from my presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, behold thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy right hand lead me, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. The darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as a day, the darkness and the light are both alike to me, to thee. And I guess to that to me that means regardless of where we're at. God is always there. His Spirit is always with us. Um, I'm not sure what the... I didn't dive into the translation where it says, if, I'm, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. But I do know there's been a, a vision someone had that even the people in hell still are in the love of God. Now, I don't have scripture to back that up, that up unless it's this, but what that person was saying was that God loves with an everlasting love, and it does not change. But yet, uh, sin separates us from God. And so I'm wondering how that works. Uh, how does sin separate us from God? Isaiah 59, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you. I read that a couple times, and I realized that it does not say that God hides from us. It says our sins hide his face from us. So... If we have sin, we can repent, we can believe, and we can bring it to the cross. It seems to me that it's not God that's, well, I guess that's obvious. It's not God that's the problem. But our unbelief and our pride separates us from God when we have sin. It's not that uh, God is all of a sudden saying, oh, you sin, I'm out of here. It is that if we have sin, we can no longer see God clearly because of our unbelief and our pride that's getting in between. And then we come to, uh, to Jesus, who uh, there's a lot of, a lot of verses that he, uh, a lot of things he said about the love of God. I believe that Jesus was an expression of the love of God. Uh, I've often heard he preach that Jesus had to die on the cross so that we could go to heaven. And I had someone really seriously challenge me on that one time. He said that he didn't have to. He really... He really didn't have to. He wanted to. And Jesus coming here and dying on the cross was an expression of the love of God. God, by his nature, by his very nature, would not just stand aside and, and let us die a spiritual death. He, uh, he came and he uh, died on the cross it says, for the joy that was set before him, he was, I believe that it was something he did. It was not a performance thing, thinking I'm going to die on the cross and save all mankind. It was, this is who I am. I'm going to show the world how much I love them. And then there's the verse in 1 John 3, which we heard already today. Behold, what manner of love 
the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The sons of God. There's a... That's... That phrase packs quite a punch. To be the son, the sons of God. What I'm reading here is that God loves us so much that he wants us to be, uh, to be his sons. He wants us to be in his family. I used to think that that we would, uh, when we come to Christ, we kind of get adopted into the family of God. And I, there is a verse somewhere that says something like that. But there's also, uh, there's also places in the Bible where it speaks about that we were created before the foundations of the world to be the sons of God. Um, so I kind of changed my thinking on that, that we're not just, pilgrims and strangers and then we get adopted into the family of God we were created to be sons of God and if we uh, come to Christ it's we're coming in a sense back to where God wants us to be for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them um, I don't think it was God's purpose that we would just flounder around until we come to him and then everything's okay. We were created for good works. We were created to be sons of the living God. Uh, the last thing here I have is that uh, it's impossible to love without being vulnerable. Um Without vulnerability, love has only as much room as our hurts and our disappointments allow. So, uh, love is something that, uh, shall we say it's not safe. It's something that has the potential to hurt us if the person doesn't receive it right. It's something that uh, involves risk, but without that, there's no there's no room for love to grow. Um, in Corinthians thirteen, it says that uh, it describes love. It describes all these things about love. If we don't have love when we do something, it's just an em it's just empty. And then it also says in one verse something I never could really understand. It says, love believes all things. It hopes all things. And what I'm reading into that is love is not, love will just simply give and it will love and it will not draw back and say, are you for real or is this, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hold back. Love will give it will believe in people and it will just pour out um one place in scripture it, it speaks about the rivers of living water flowing out of our bellies um, and where does that come from i believe it comes from god within us if we have god within us we have the ability to pour out rivers of living water but our capacity to pour out is only as big as our capacity to receive from God. So if we see God as a loving Father, and we are able to receive His love, we will be able to pour it out. But um, if we are in a place where we don't trust God or we are not sure about God, then our ability to love our fellow man is, will be quite a bit more limited. However, if we are in that place, we have a God who is amazing. He will not sit passively by when we are when we are uh, hungry for Him, when we are in a place where we don't want to be. God is 
God is just amazing at how he will he will come into our lives and he will change things um, one thing that stood out to me at one point was that um, we think we want to do things for God we think we want to uh, be the person who God wants we want to be in his we want to be someone in his kingdom we want to be there's a need in all of us for significance but God on the other hand is not sitting back wondering what we can do for him he is active in our lives he is wanting to do things for us and I think the word passive is about the last word we can use to describe God he is active, he is alive today, and he he is wanting to uh, have us uh, saved, healed, and delivered, and he wants to set us free. <laughs>